Hi, you guys. We are ready for our last section in chapter three. We're talking about equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. This should be review as far as the slope part. You're all past math eight. So this is what we're gonna learn. Uh, first of all, the core vocabulary, as you can see, is directed line segment. We also know slope, slope intercept form, and y intercept from algebra. Remember, if you're in your glossary on the online or in your book, all you have to do is click it and it'll show you that definition. Of course, I'll be showing it to you on the screen as well. And here are our objectives. Hopefully, you will use the slope to partition directed line segments, identify parallel and perpendicular lines, write equations of parallel and perpendicular lines, and use the slope to find the distance from a point to a line. So without further ado, this is gonna be a longer video than normal, definitely longer than 12 minutes. So these definitions in your book or in your glossary. So we're gonna start with the first one. Partitioning a directed line segment is a segment that represents moving from point A to point B. The following example shows how to use slope to find a point on a direct line segment that partitions the segment in a given ratio. So um, I'm just gonna show this video and watch. It's a lot of words, but if you follow along, it's not that difficult, so thank you. Find the coordinates of point B along the directed line segment AB so that the ratio of AP to PB is three to two. Solution. In order to divide the segment in the ratio three to two, think of dividing or partitioning the segment into three plus two or five congruent pieces. Point P is the point that is three fifths of the way from point A to point B. Find the rise and run from point A to point B. Leave the slope in terms of rise and run and do not simplify. Recall that the slope of a line or line segment through two points, x sub one, y sub one, and x sub two, y sub two is defined as follows. M equals the quantity y sub two minus y sub one divided by the quantity x sub two minus x sub one, which equals the change in y divided by the change in x, which equals rise divided by run. You can choose either of the two points to be x sub one, y sub one. So the slope of segment AB is M equals the quantity eight minus two divided by the quantity six minus three, which equals six divided by three, where six is the rise and three is the run. Now to find the coordinates of point P, add three fifths of the run to the X coordinate of A and add three fifths of the rise to the Y coordinate of A. The run is three. So three fifths of three equals three fifths times three, which equals one and eight tenths. The rise is six. So three fifths of six equals three fifths times six, which equals three and six tenths. So the coordinates of P are three plus one and eight tenths, two plus three and six tenths, which equals four and eight tenths, five and six tenths. I'm trying to get you to show that. Sorry, it's blocked on my screen. The monitoring progress we'll do in class. So now we're going to go into parallel and perpendicular lines. You have two theorems in this section. Theorem 3.13, as you can see, in a coordinate plane, two distinct non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if, which means both ways, remember, if they have the same slope. So any two vertical lines are parallel if they have the same slope. And vice versa, if they have the same slope, then they are parallel. Perpendicular lines are slightly different. In a coordinate plane, two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative one. And that's, that means that one of them is a negative reciprocal. So depending on how you learned that before, 
What matters is if you multiply the two slopes, you get an answer of negative 1. So as you can see, m1, or the slope of the blue one, times the slope of the red one equals negative 1. The proof is example 42. As you can see, again, look in your book. But this should be review from algebra. Here's another example of how you would show that two lines are parallel and or perpendicular. Determine which of the lines are parallel and which of the lines are perpendicular. Solution. Find the slope of each line. For line A, m equals the quantity 3 minus 2 divided by the quantity 0 minus negative 3, which equals 1 third. For line B, m equals the quantity 0 minus negative 1 divided by the quantity 2 minus 0, which equals 1 half. For line C, m equals the quantity negative 4 minus negative 5 divided by the quantity 1 minus negative 1, which equals 1 half. For line D, m equals the quantity 2 minus 0 divided by the quantity negative 3 minus negative 2, which equals negative 2. Now, in a coordinate plane, two distinct non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. Because lines B and C have the same slope, lines B and C are parallel. In a coordinate plane, two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative 1. Because 1 half times negative 2 equals negative 1, lines C and D are perpendicular, and lines C and D are perpendicular. Now, the next thing you can do to apply the slopes of parallel lines theorem and the slopes of perpendicular lines theorem is to write equations of lines, again, from algebra. And you know what? If you didn't learn it before or you totally don't remember it, no time like the present. Here we go. Write an equation of the line passing through the point negative 1, 1 that is parallel to the line y equals 2x minus 3. Solution. Step 1. Find the slope m of the parallel line. The linear equation y equals 2x minus 3 is written in slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So the line y equals 2x minus 3 has a slope of 2. By the slopes of parallel lines theorem, a line parallel to this line also has a slope of 2, so m equals 2. Step 2. Find the y-intercept b by using m equals 2 and xy equals negative 1, 1. Use the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Substitute 2 for m, negative 1 for x, and 1 for y. Then solve for b. This gives you 3 equals b. Because m equals 2 and b equals 3, an equation of the line is y equals 2x plus 3. Use a graph to check that the line y equals 2x minus 3 is parallel to the line y equals 2x plus 3. So hopefully that looks familiar. We'll practice it more, of course. Here we go. Now that we have practiced a parallel line, we're going to do the same thing with perpendicular. Write an equation of the line passing through the point 2, 3 that is perpendicular to the line 2x plus y equals 2. Solution. Step 1. Find the slope m of the perpendicular line. The line 2x plus y equals 2, or y equals negative 2x plus 2, has a slope of negative 2. Use the slopes of perpendicular lines theorem. By this theorem, the product of the slopes of perpendicular lines is negative 1. So, negative 2 times m equals negative 1. To solve for m, divide each side of the equation by negative 2. This gives you m equals 1 half. Step 2. 
find the y-intercept p by using m equals one half and x y equals two three. Use the slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b. Substitute one half for m, two for x, and three for y. Then solve for b. This gives you two equals b. Because m equals one half and b equals two, an equation of the line is y equals one half x plus two. Check that the lines are perpendicular by graphing their equations and using a protractor to measure one of the angles formed by their intersection. So keep your graph paper handy. Again, we'll do monitoring progress in class. Now, um, finding the distance from a point to a line, I thought we'd gone over it just a little bit in another subject, but if not, this is again, a review of the distance formula from algebra one. And we wanna know what the distance is between a point and a line. We know that the shortest distance between a point and a line, any given point, is its perpendicular line. So once you have determined that you're looking for the shortest one, this will help you find the distance. And we'll practice a little more in class, but watch this example. Find the distance from the point one zero to the line y equals negative x plus three. Solution. Step one. Find an equation of the line perpendicular to the line y equals negative x plus three that passes through the point one zero. First, find the slope m of the perpendicular line. The line y equals negative x plus three has a slope of negative one. Use the slopes of perpendicular lines theorem. By this theorem, the product of the slopes of perpendicular lines is negative one. So negative one times m equals negative one. To solve for m, divide each side of the equation by negative one. This gives you m equals one. Then find the y-intercept b by using m equals one and x, y equals one, zero. Use the slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. Substitute one for m, one for x, and zero for y. Now solve for b. This gives you negative one equals b. Because m equals one and b equals negative one, an equation of the line is y equals x minus one. Step two. Recall that the solution of a system of two linear equations and two variables gives the coordinates of the point of intersection of the graphs of the equation. There are two special cases when the lines have the same slope. When the system has no solution, the lines are parallel. When the Zero system solution. has infinitely many solutions, the lines coincide. Use the two equations to write and solve a system of equations to find the point where the two lines intersect. So the system is equation one, y equals negative x plus three, and equation two, y equals x minus one. Now, one way to solve this system is to use substitution. Notice that each equation is already solved for y. To begin, you can substitute negative x plus three for y in equation two. First, write equation two, y equals x minus one. Then substitute negative x plus three for y. Now solve for x. This gives you x equals two. Next, substitute two for x in equation one and solve for y. First write equation one, y equals negative x plus three. Then substitute two for x. Now simplify. This gives you y equals one. So the perpendicular lines intersect at two, one, as shown in the graph. Step three, use the distance formula to find the distance from one, zero to two, one. The distance is equal to the square root of the quantity one minus two squared plus the quantity zero minus one squared. This simplifies to the square root of the quantity negative one squared plus the quantity negative one squared 
which equals the square root of 2. The square root of 2 is approximately equal to 1 and 4 tenths. So the distance from the point 1, 0, the line y equals negative x plus 3, is about 1 and 4 tenths units. And remember, 1.4 is an approximation. If you want to leave it in the uh, radical form, you can. I'm sorry about the camera part blocking the work. I don't know how to undo the um, captions right now. So uh, sorry, at least you can follow along. A little bit more. Um, that's monitoring. And it's time for exercises. So we will be doing some notes under the camera together. Um, these examples I just wanted to show you to get you ready for equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. And then um, if you have any questions, make sure you ask them before we do our exercises in Big Ideas Math. So I'm going to stop the recording.